Hello everyone, welcome back. This is video number four in our series on seedlings. Uh, so if you haven't watched our other videos, please check those out. It'll show you how we got to this point, essentially. So this is about a month later after we started the seedlings and these plants are starting to get what's called true leaves. As you can see, this leaf in the middle of this pepper plant is different from the leaves on the left and right. These leaves on the left and right are the seedling leaves, meaning the first leaves that the plant puts out when it sprouts and the seed sprouts. Eventually the plant will start to mature a little and it will get actual pepper leaves which are in the center. The same thing happens with tomatoes and every other um, plant that you're going to grow. So um, the sort of nondescript seedling leaves will be first and then the actual leaves that look like the plant. Here's our whorehound, uh, which is a cool perennial herb. Really, the, all I know about that is the candy from when I was a kid, um, but that's supposed to be a really good medicinal plant, so we're going to grow some in our herb garden. It's perennial, so once it's in the ground, you don't have to worry about planting it again. Um, here's an example with tomatoes about true leaves. So this is a seedling leaf. Like Every tomato's seedling leaf is going to look like that. When the seed sprouts, it's going to have those little oval leaves. Then when the plant gets bigger, um, this is what the true leaves look like. This on a brandy wine anyway, these look almost like basil. Um, this kind of tangled up with the other one as you can see. That's one thing about tomato seedlings. Um, but when you start to see that, that means you have a little baby plant more so than just a seedling. And so now it's going to need a different kind of care, which we'll talk about because there's not a whole lot of nutrients in the potting mix. It's pretty much just peat moss. And so these plants have been living off the nutrients in the seed. Here's another demonstration of true leaves. The brandywine again, you can see they have a very distinctive type of tomato leaf. They look um, very oval versus tomato leaves typically, as you'll see in the next one, look very serrated and kind of spiky. And so um, any leaf that has that potato or, or sort of oval leaf shape tends to be a really, really good tomato, um, at least from my experience. The brandywine's a classic. Here's an example of what a typical tomato will look like. That's the seedling leaf. Notice it's the same as the brandywine, just kind of nondescript leaves. But then these kind of serrated looking um, leaves are the actual tomato leaf, and that's what most tomato plants look like, actually. They have those. So these are about four or five inches tall. I keep the lights about eight inches from them, and you know, as the plants get taller, you just sort of put the uh, lights up further. Here's an example of peppers. As we mentioned before, you can see the seedling leaves are the larger leaves on these, and the the true leaves are just starting, the little baby leaves in the center. Those are going to be your actual pepper leaves, and eventually those seedling leaves will just kind of fall off once the plant gets to a good size. Those are just to kind of get it going, um, get it started with some photosynthesis, and then it will go about making its actual leaves and starting to become a, a full-blown plant. So as I mentioned, it's time to fertilize. So let's get some fertilizer in these and we'll talk a little bit about um, how we do that. Okay, so to fertilize, what I like to do is I like to find your fertilizer of choice. Now I use miracle Grow, um, and what I do is I basically have a 50% diluted solution, meaning um, whatever the package says, I'll use half the amount of miracle Grow because these are just little seedlings inside. They're not producing fruit or anything, and I don't want them to do that. I've had them do that before, and it's not a good thing if you start them too early. Um, so if it says to put like one and a half tablespoons, I'll put half of that amount um, with the same amount of water, just a very diluted mix. Now you can use any number of things. There are organic fertilizers. I like to grow what I call kind of semi-organic. Um, there are certain things like our fruit trees that are very difficult to grow organically and actually get fruit, um, at least in our area. And so um, you have to use certain things here or there. So I don't mind using miracle Grow myself. It's something that works really well. I don't use a lot of it. I use it very sparingly. And outside, I don't really fertilize a whole lot because we have so much compost and um, cow manure and that kind of stuff going on that we don't really need to. But 
you know you have to find something that's going to work and so because it's indoors you also want it to be low odor when you're doing this so i find it works really well i use the um i just happen to have the tomato one handy the the pink one the pink um granules if you know what i mean so you just mix it up in the watering can and pour it over now i only fertilize one time typically so i'll fertilize them when they have their true leaves and that's it um, and it tends to work just fine. This just gives them a little shot of nutrients because again that soil, the potting mix, it isn't really soil, it's literally just uh, peat moss for the most part with maybe a little bit of perlite or something in it and so it's not a very nutrient dense medium for your plants and they're going to need something once they um, kind of burst out of their seeds and then they don't have that seed to feed on anymore. Um, yes, they're doing some photosynthesis here, but they're also going to need a little something to get themselves going. So give them a little shot of fertilizer once they have their true leaves, and then they will really grow. Since I filmed this about a week ago, these things have almost doubled in size already, which is something to think about because then you're going to have a lot of plants um, that are a decent size to make sure they have light and space. The other thing is you'll notice these seed trays have holes in the bottom, which is handy because you can put some water in the bottom of these seed trays and kind of make these almost like self-watering. So you can put a little bit of water in there and they'll just soak it up as they need it, which is really handy. So this is our view for today as I'm filming this. So inside, very green and bright in the seedlings shelf. Outside, very cold and snowy in mid-March here in western New York. So we're all looking forward to springtime. Even the cats, you know, here's Pandora wondering when this window is going to be open. Unfortunately, not today, but soon. Before you know it, it'll be time to be out there. So we appreciate you watching, and please check out our other videos in the Seed Starting series, and we hope to see you again soon.